That Clips would be crazy. Clips die, bro. What is going on? He's going to be hell on wheels in the first round, for sure. He's going to be hell on wheels. You know, because I don't know how long he can go. I don't know what is joy. Joe Rogan has reacted to Mike Tyson brutally knocking out a sparring partner in a new leaked footage. On the other hand, Roy Jones Jr., the legendary multiweight world champion, has offered a stern caution to Jake Paul about the formidable challenge of stepping into the ring with Mike. Tyson, despite Tyson's age, Jones, who was Tyson's last opponent in their 2020 exhibition bout dubbed Lockdown Knockdown, recalls all too well the sheer power Tyson still wields. In an interview with Shane Mosley, when questioned about the toughest opponent he'd ever faced, Jones didn't hesitate. He immediately named Tyson as the hardest puncher he had ever encountered. He said, Mike Tyson is still the strongest puncher that I've ever been in the ring with ever now. I think he's 57, maybe 58, yet he's still the strongest puncher the first time he hit me on my chin. I felt like a mule had kicked me in my chest. Although the bout was officially declared a draw, Many fans and punch statistics suggested Tyson had the edge. The event garnered positive reactions, showcasing that matches between retired boxers can still be thrilling without diminishing their stored careers. Jones's remarks carry significant weight as Jake Paul prepares to face Tyson. In a professional bout this November, the fight featuring milder rules due to Paul's 30-year age gap with Tyson has sparked widespread criticism. Despite this, Paul has vowed to bulk up a strategy Jones endorses as essential, though not without its flaws. Jones commented if he's at 200 and 30 that can make it very interesting. Jake's not going to fight close, and he can't stay away from him, because Mike will close the gap too quickly. I thought I could stay away from him. I couldn't. And I know I'm better at staying away from people than Jake, is Jones also warned that Paul's added muscle might not be enough to hold Tyson at bay. Jake accepted the extra weight, understanding that he wouldn't be able to maintain distance, despite knowing he can't avoid Tyson entirely. Jake is banking on his newfound strength to push him back, keep him at arm's length, Jones dismissed. The question about Tyson's age slowing him down, or Paul's youth giving him an edge, saying it didn't apply here. The real key is pushing Tyson back, especially if you're big enough to do so, as he's less effective moving backward. But remember you've never been hit with his power before. So we'll just have to wait and see Jones' observations add an unexpected layer of intrigue, deepening the suspense as the long-anticipated confrontation draws near. On Pro Box TV, an enthusiastic Tim Bradley threw his support behind Iron Mike, passionately asserting that the relaxed rules play to the veteran advantage. The former two-champion turned analyst expressed his belief that a knockout might be imminent. He said, Mike Tyson, knock his ass out, baby. At first, I thought about it. I was like, this is kind of crazy. But then, I saw the rules. It said, knockouts, knockdowns, it's official. It can happen. Two minutes, that's going to favor Mike Tyson. Two minutes instead of three. No doubt about it. Think about it. A two-minute drill. Bradley further added, he comes out in the first four rounds like he's always blazing Mike Tyson. Getting him against the ropes. Banging him to the body. Hitting him with power shots. Come on, man. He has the potential to knock this man out. You know that power is the last thing that leaves you. This is Mike Tyson. We're talking about two minutes. That's all it takes. He can get the knockout knock Disney boy the hell out. Meanwhile, UFC Hall of Famer Michael Bisping believes that if Jake Paul competed in the Olympics, he'd struggle to shape the narrative in his favor. Following Team USA's disappointing performance in boxing, where they secured just a single medal, Paul revealed his intention to compete in the 2028 Olympics known as the Problem Child. He boasts a 10-1 record as a professional boxer. His latest victory came in July, when he delivered a knockout blow to Mike Perry in the sixth round of their cruiserweight bout. Bisping expressed his intrigue over Paul's decision, noting that Paul won't have any influence over the selection of his opponents on his YouTube channel. Bisping commented that while it's understandable Paul wants to compete in the Olympics, he respects him for it. He pointed out that Jake Paul is taking an unconventional approach by moving from being a well-known figure with several professional boxing matches to competing as an amateur. Bisping also mentioned that the recent Olympic gold medalist had already fought in four professional bouts. He added that if Jake Paul were to win the Olympics, it would be an incredible achievement.
Right, so fair enough, the man wants to go and compete in the Olympics. And you know what? I've actually got a lot of respect for him. Now, I did think that professional boxers weren't allowed to compete at the Olympics, but that rule changed in 2016. Now, Jake Paul's kind of doing it the opposite way around because he's very famous. He's had a lot of professional boxing fights and he's going to go to the amateurs. But the guy that just won the Olympic gold medalist, he's actually had four professional boxing bouts as well. Now, if Jake Paul was to win the Olympics, I mean, that would be incredible. This thing further remarked that if Jake Paul were to compete in the Olympics and win, he would join the ranks of legendary boxers like Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, Joe Frazier, Oscar De La Hoya, Lennox Lewis, Pernell Whitaker, and Mark Breland. However, Bisping pointed out that in the Olympics, Paul wouldn't have the luxury of controlling the promotion meaning he couldn't handpick his opponents. Bisping also noted that Paul wouldn't be able to choose opponents who are far past their prime, such as a 58-year-old Mike Tyson. He emphasized that the last time Paul faced an opponent of his own size and weight, he ended up losing. He would join the likes of the great Muhammad Ali, the GOAT, George Foreman, Joel Frazier, Oscar De La Hoya, Lennox Lewis, Purnell Whitaker, Mark Breland. The list goes on. So many fantastic Olympic boxing champions. Anthony Joshua. Now, of course, for Jake Paul, if he did go and fight in the Olympics, well, first of all, it wouldn't be his promotion, would it? So he wouldn't be able to cherry pick opponents. He wouldn't be able to take people that are way past their sell-by date, like Mike Tyson, who's 58 years old. No, the man that just won the Olympics got the gold medal from Uzbekistan. It was Lazizbek Mulajonev. This man is 25 years old and he is six foot Four, okay? The last time Jake Paul fought somebody is on size and weight, we know that he lost. On November 15th, Paul will steep back into the ring to face boxing icon Mike Tyson at AT&T Stadium in Dallas, a matchup that stirred considerable criticism. Bisping noted that if Jake Paul were to compete in the Olympics, several aspects of his career would change. He explained that Paul wouldn't be able to cut weight as he usually does since Olympic boxing requires athletes to compete every few days. Additionally, Bisping pointed out that the event wouldn't be Paul's promotion, meaning everything wouldn't revolve around him. There also wouldn't be a significant payday involved. Instead, Paul would be participating to represent his country, challenge himself, and potentially become an Olympic gold medalist. Most of the Olympics, a lot of things will change, that's for sure. Number one, he wouldn't be able to cut weight because in the Olympics, you're going to have to box every few days, okay? Uh, it wouldn't be his promotion, so everything's not going to be centered around him. There wouldn't be a massive payday on display. He would be doing it literally to represent his country and to test himself and potentially become an Olympic gold medal. Meanwhile, Daniel Cormett, the former USC2 division champion, hasn't exactly warmed to Jake Paul's boxing career. Their tension boiled over during the UFC 261 pay-per-view event leading to a fiery confrontation that only ended when security intervened to break them. Apart since diving into professional boxing in January 2020, Paul has established a remarkable presence in the sport, boasting an impressive 10-1 record. His notable victories include six wins against former UFC fighters, a strategy that sparked considerable debate among fans and analysts. As as he prepares to face boxing legend Mike Tyson in his next bout, Jake Paul has also thrown down the gauntlet to UFC light heavyweight champion Alex Pereira and combat sports sensation Conor McGregor, hinting at future clashes. Paul has also unveiled his ambitious plan to six for a gold medal in boxing at the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics, aiming to bring glory to the United States. This announcement follows the U.S. boxing team's disappointing showing at the Paris Olympics, where they managed only a single medal and missed. Out on gold, in a recent appearance on the BS with Jake Paul podcast, he shared his thoughts. I'm going to enter the 2028 Olympics for boxing in Los Angeles. I'm sick and tired of waiting around and waiting for another gold for Team USA. I've definitely added another couple of years to my boxing career because of that, but Los Angeles, United States, I'm going to do it. Why not 2028 Olympics? You heard it here. First gold medal your mind, brother Cormier took to Instagram to counter the allegations, sharing a post via a meme fighting that showcased Paul's remarks, perplexed by the problem child's assertions. Cormier responded, does he not understand he has to qualify and he can't be a pro fighter and be going backward? To amateur, this is crazy. How do people buy this? In a recent chat with Mimi Junkie, Daniel Cormier gave his take on the upcoming fight asserting that Tyson has the power to take Paul down with a knockout. He stated, I don't even know how to call. This a fight, honestly. I don't even know how it's a fight. It's a weird deal. But I think it'll be fun. 
I think if Mike Tyson can fight and is free to just fight fight the way he wants to, he's either going to knock Paul out or he's going to get caught with something that's going to get him knocked out. But hell, I'm watching it. It'll be fun as long as it lasts. In contrast, Jake may face another season heavyweight once he finishes his bout with Mike Tyson. Kevin McBride has signaled his readiness to challenge Paul next contingent on Jake's success against Tyson. He said if Jake Paul takes the mantle of the last man to beat Mike Tyson, then I'd hope Jake Paul would give me the opportunity to fight him then. He'd have the chance to be the last man to beat Tyson and McBride. I'd jump in there with him. Paul is unlikely to entertain any proposal from McBride, as it pales in compare to the potentially lucrative chance presented by a bout with Tyson back in 2000. And six, when Iron Mike was still on the decline, McBride managed to spar with Tyson and secure an easy victory given Tyson's history of medical problems, his physical condition has probably deteriorated further, despite the criticism Paul faces for selecting Tyson as an opponent and growing concerns from doctors about Tyson's health. Should he lose the allure of the Tyson fight remains significantly more appealing, Tyson is a fierce puncher and McBride who initially found it difficult to deal with his aggression, has warned the influencer to notify the referee if he seems about to break the rules. He said, keep your hands up and watch that he doesn't spit out his mouthpiece. And if he does tell the ref I'd warn Jake Paul to make sure Mike doesn't spit his mouthpiece out.